We are ready to begin. I think there's a lot of changes that happened in the channel recently, and I haven't really addressed them. Either. And this is the question that everybody's been asking. It's on every single video. It's in every single comment section. They, they change the rules on the algorithm constantly, and it's, it's incredibly tiring. The way YouTube changed everything about how their site works, to the algorithm, to the way videos go out. But YouTube doesn't reflect that excitement, and that's where it's annoying. On the 17th of January 2013, four siblings from the state of Ohio would begin a YouTube channel with the overall goal of creating variety gaming content. This fact by itself isn't all that interesting, but if I were to tell you that only six months after creating the channel, they were getting 60 million views per month, then it makes the story slightly more interesting. However, if we take it one step further and I tell you that that same YouTube channel doesn't even crack 2 million views a month these days, then you might raise an eyebrow and ask what could have possibly Possibly gone wrong. The channel we're talking about is known as Venturian Tale, and whether their channel's downfall was owed to their failure to adapt to an ever-changing YouTube algorithm. Basically because YouTube's algorithm has kind of changed and they've made it that the more videos you put up the less people see them. It's a really weird thing and I don't know what's going up on with it. Their eventual lack of commitment for the channel. There won't be any uploads for a little while. And I just wanted to let you guys know because I think it's fair to you guys to know. Or just a total unwillingness to make any changes to their content over a seven year period. Basically, the channel is pretty much going to just keep being the same. I mean, nothing's really gonna change. Their story is an astounding case compared to many others on the platform. This is the downfall of the Venturian Tail channel. We were trying to pick a name for the channel because if we were going to start this channel we needed a name for it. The name Venturian Tail was initially derived after the creator of the channel who's yet to be introduced would mix two different words found in the dictionary ultimately creating the name that would go on to represent the creators of the channel. Adventuring Tail. It's a story. So we added Tail to the end of it and boom there we go. Venturian Tail was born. The Venturian Tail channel then began on the front foot by immediately introducing somewhat of a unique idea comparative to what was available on YouTube at the time. A constant collaboration between four different family members. On the 31st of January 2013, only four weeks after the creation of the channel, the audience would be introduced to the first two siblings, Jordan Fry, who was the creator of the channel, and his sister, Sierra Fry, who appeared in the very first video on the channel titled Let's Play a Minecraft Tale, The Adventure Begins. Greetings, everybody! Buddy, who will maybe sometime watch this video. Sometime on the tube of the YouTube. Sometime. The tube probably not ever. <laughs> the final two siblings being Bethany and Isaac would then be introduced only one day later when the channel would upload a video titled Siblings Play Slender Part 1. Greetings everyone. This is Venturian with my sibling nubs back here. That's you, yeah. After being introduced to the four siblings on the Venturian Tale channel, it was clear that these creators had certain elements that would be an advantage compared to other creators beginning a new channel. Firstly, there was four of them, which means four times the helping hands when it comes to editing, brainstorming video ideas, as well as just general labor towards the creation of the content. If I didn't live with them, we would not have a channel because there's no way I could do all this work on my own. They, they needed to be here at this time for me to even begin the channel. Four brains is always going to be better than one, so they had instant leverage from the get-go. On top of this, the Venturian Tail channel was able to leverage off an extremely popular video style at the time, being the kids play, adults play, elders play type videos, by creating an offshoot with their siblings play series. Whoever gets the most pages in this video thing, wins. Getting an instant upper hand on many other new competing creators. The final thing that I want to cover before we really get into the meat and bones of Venturian Tales growth is that prior to the creation of the channel, each sibling actually had some minor experience in creating content on the platform. The main creator on the channel, Venturian or Jordan Fry, had been creating videos since all the way back in 2007 under the name Jordan Fry 750, however never had much success, gaining approximately 700 subscribers between 2007 and 2013. Sierra had been creating videos for almost as long, beginning her channel in 2008, once again posting various videos with little success. Hello, Sierra Skywalker. Hey, better not be filming. I could let anybody online know what it looked like. Isaac created his channel in 2009 and had been posting a few random videos since all the way back then. I'm trying to hide from the rake people! Then finally, Bethany, who had also created the channel in 2009, posting various random videos. We didn't find, like, my sister's cat, but I'm cold, so I'm going back. 
to the car. But receiving minimal success before the creation of the main Venturi and Tail channel. Despite having a background in making videos, Jordan, the creator of the channel, never thought that he would begin making videos with all the siblings as one main channel. I've always had a background in making videos on YouTube, but I've never recorded them as in, like, myself as my personality in the forefront. Usually it's like, I'm in a video for something. But while laying awake one night, felt a compelling urge to begin making videos as a group. I, c I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't think about anything else. And I thought, you know what? I could be, I could make videos because... And it seems as though this random desire to begin the Venturi and Tail channel, despite each creator receiving minimal success personally, was the right move for the family. Because if you take four siblings, all of which having some basic idea of what does and doesn't work on the platform, success is sure to follow, which is exactly what happened. The earliest piece of data available shows that only 12 days after the first video was posted, How do you make an act? What do you mean, you don't know how to make anything? No. Venturian Tail was already at 2,000 subscribers. 2,000 subscribers in 12 days. An almost unprecedented level of growth for any channel on the YouTube platform. Now it's possible that some of this growth was the result of each creator asking their audience to subscribe from their own personal channels. However, I can't really find any evidence of this and each channel was quite small at the time. So we're gonna assume that most of this growth was completely organic. It also didn't seem like this first month of growth was just a one-off fluke because in both March and April, the Venturian Tail channel would grow a further 12,000 subscribers, rounding the channel off at 15,000 subscribers only three months after their first video was posted. Much of the growth was owed to the fact that there were four people running Venturi and Tail, giving the channel the ability to pump out up to three or four videos per day on an extremely consistent basis. We're actually going to try our best to keep the videos uploading steadily so that um, there's no breaks. You know, you, you won't see uh, much of a decline in uploads Hopefully. On top of this, much of the initial growth was owed to the channel displaying very specific game modes and mods such as the TARDIS Doctor Who mod. We will be exploring time and space in the TARDIS. And the Lord of the Rings adventure map mod. And today we are going to explore the Lord of the Rings adventure map. However, it would be with another game that Venturi and Tail would really find its groove, eventually leading to explosive success on the channel. This is Venturian with Homeless Goomba, and today we are playing Gary's Mod. Yes. <laughs> In early April 2013, a fan of the channel by the name of Brad the Lad would send Venturian a copy of the game Gary's Mod. What made you start playing Gmod? Actually, someone by the name of Brad. He actually sent us free copies of Gmod, so we thought, you know what, let's film it. And as stated in the previous clip, a video of the game would be posted after shortly on the channel. This is a, a disclaimer, but we know nothing about Gary's Mod. Yeah. Okay. I've never. So never we are complete at noobs at this. Turns out the game performed quite well on the channel while also being incredibly enjoyable for each creator, ultimately leading to further success for the Venturi and Tail channel. And we kept filming it and we pumped out so many videos and it became a huge success for us. By the beginning of May 2013, only one month after first showcasing Gmod on the channel, Gmod would become their main game with the vast majority of the content on the channel being switched to Gmod. This is Venturi and with Homeless Goomba and today we are back in Gmod. This change ended up being perfect for the channel as in May 2013, only four months after posting their first video, the channel would receive 18.5 million views, many of which coming from the newly introduced Gmod series. This view count would then double the next month, gaining 40 million views in June 2013, then 60 million in July 2013. Venturi and Tail had gone from gaining zero views in January 2013 to 2 million per day only six months later in July 2013, a figure indicative of how entertaining the siblings were at the time. This insane growth was also owed to a new unique idea that the siblings had introduced into their videos where they would role play various crazy characters such as Jimmy Casket, a serial killer who always came off as a bit of a whack job. Do you want to know my secret, Johnny? And the Akachala family who would represent a southern hillbilly family. Sally, I told you this the last time. I ain't lifting none of them stupid metal things. Don't you love it? Have you seen my biceps? Welcome to the gun show! <laughs> the idea of playing different characters created inside jokes within the channel, creating connection between Venturi and Tail and their audience, as well as providing a reason for viewers to constantly return to the videos in case there had been any development within the characters. This returning audience ensured consistent views, and while the views backed off from 60 million per month to around 45 million per month, the channel was still growing extremely quickly. Venturi and Tail went from 100,000 subscribers to 300,000 to 600,000, then 1 million subscribers 
in July 2014, only 1.5 years after initially starting the channel. <gasps> One million in three months! It updated! It updated! Oh, the views would then unsurprisingly continue at around 45 million per month until three months later when a new piece of content would be introduced, ultimately resulting in another massive increase in views for the creators of the Venturian Tale channel. Today we are taking a look at the Five Nights at Freddy's models basically it's a pill changer pack in gmod on the 4th of october 2014 the venturian tale channel would upload a video titled gmod five nights at freddy scary mod i still don't know what it is okay so i i have no idea what the game is i will might play it someday but you guys have been asking us to do it now despite venturian and the siblings having no idea what the game was at the time the five nights at freddy's videos would go on to become the most viewed mod on their channel only one day after uploading this initial five nights at freddy's video it would receive 200,000 views almost 10 times more than some of the other videos that have been posted at the same time. This then led them to upload a second video titled Scariest Horror Map Ever, Five Nights at Freddy's Mod. We are doing the Five Nights at Freddy's map. Now, apparently this map actually works. Like, it's actually supposed to be terrifying and things are supposed to happen. And Which would go on to become the most popular video ever uploaded to their channel, gaining 16.7 million views to this day. Today, if you sort Venturian Tales videos by most popular, the nine most viewed videos on the channel channel are all Five Nights at Freddy's Gmod videos, which is just a small sample of the 272 total Five Nights at Freddy's videos posted to the channel in around late 2014. The Five Nights at Freddy's series caused the channel to go from 45 million views per month to 80 million views per month by early 2015, an insane boost from a channel already dominating the YouTube gaming landscape. However, this point of hitting 80 million views per month would also be the same period when the views would begin to decline for the Venturian Table channel. In February 2015, only two years after the first video was posted to the channel, while sitting at a subscriber count of 1.5 million, the Venturian Tale channel would see a peak in viewership followed by a long-term decline, ultimately resulting in the death of the channel. Who would have seen it coming? The 80 million views received in their peak month would have given confidence in the future of their channel to even the most pessimistic of fans, but an incoming failure was on the way for the siblings running the Venturian Tale channel. By July 2015, only six months after receiving 80 million views in the month, the views on the channel would drop down to only 55 million. Now, there's no problem with this. That kind of fluctuation is pretty standard for any kind of creator, especially considering most of these 80 million views had come from their Five Nights at Freddy's Gmod videos, which were extremely specific, did not have much room for differentiation, and were not going to keep an audience interested over the long term given the lack of possible alterations within each video. However, the drop in views really started to become apparent by the end of the year, because their channel hadn't switched their content style and recovered back to 80 million views per month, but rather gotten worse and dropped once again, receiving only 33 million views in the month of December to round off the end of 2015. The first thing that might explain Venturian Tale's initial drop in views could be the drop of not only the popularity of Five Nights at Freddy's, but also the popularity of the main game that they were playing, Gary's Mod. If we look at the Google trend graph, we can see that the popularity of Gmod was at its peak in July 2013 as their channel was taking off, but by February 2015 when the views in the channel began to decline, Gmod was also beginning to decline in popularity fairly rapidly. This decline in Gmod's popularity can be correlated almost perfectly with the decline in Venturian's viewership, and as seen on the view graph, the views were about to drop even further. Both 2016 and 2017 saw a further decline in views for the Venturian Tale channel, and had dropped from 33 million per month in early 2016 to only 10 million per month by early 2018, at which point it was becoming more and more obvious as to why Venturian Tale fans were departing in droves. Venturian Tale had not changed or improved its content in the slightest over the five years of activity on YouTube. If you take Venturian's first Gmod video and compare it to their Gmod videos of 2018, spotting a difference in video style and quality is somewhat difficult. By 2018, unfortunately recording an hour of gameplay and putting your face in the top left-hand corner just didn't really cut it anymore. The value on YouTube had well and truly switched to reward creators who are putting in insane amounts of effort into their videos. And when you have people like Vanos making multi-angled, extensively edited, well-thought-out ideas playing a similar game to Venturian, how are the siblings possibly going to compete? And the answer is they're not going to compete, leading to a decline in viewership. 
a seemingly running problem that's seen in so many of these downfall videos. Creators from the early 2010s gained popularity making entertaining but fairly simple gaming videos, but fail to notice that by around 2016, these basic videos simply weren't comparatively good enough to keep people entertained anymore. Then in January 2019, after the views had dropped once again to only 4 million per month, Venturi and Tail wouldn't upload a video for a whole month, only to return with a video titled Why I Left, which raised some eyebrows in relation to the siblings' commitment for the continuation of the channel. Uh, you guys haven't seen me in almost a month, um, and that's because at the beginning of January, I took a trip to see my girlfriend for two weeks, and I was gone. And then I got sick, and then I was sick for like another two weeks. So it's been about a month since you guys have seen me. Jordan explained in this video that he had taken two weeks off to hang out with his girlfriend, then had gotten sick, which is, trust me, YouTuber code word for, I was too lazy to make any content and was instead sitting in bed eating salt and vinegar chips while watching the Back to the Future series. Regardless of whether Venturian was sick or not, it was still somewhat indicative of the massive change in his motivation for making content. From a guy pumping out three videos a day in the early point of the channel, to a guy who was happy to take a whole month off, not say anything about it, only to to return with a lame excuse of a video as to why he couldn't make a single piece of content for the remaining fans. It would also be during this one month break that Venturi and Tail would skip a tradition, being their anniversary stream which they would do on the one year anniversary of their channel every year. And welcome to the two year anniversary special video. Venturian explained that the reason they were unable to complete an anniversary stream was because they all got sick and didn't have enough time. Today is our six year anniversary, where's our special with me being gone and then being sick and then other people getting sick and then a whole mess of things it it kind of we didn't have time to prepare for it we didn't have time to set it up which i mean look, it's fair enough but saying that you just took a month off to hang out with your girlfriend then saying you didn't have enough time is a pretty contradictory argument venturian would then upload a video in october 2019 titled what's happening with a similar premise to the why i left video however this time telling everyone why he was leaving in advance um because i'm gonna actually be gone for close to a month because I'm actually flying out to California and then I'm taking a road trip with my girlfriend. So there won't be any uploads for a little while. And it's like, if you want to have a thriving personal life with one month breaks here and there, then fair enough, man, we can see why you'd want to do that. But if you want to be a YouTuber and expect your audience to be waiting for you to get back, then you're probably living in fantasy land. On top of this, the whole video in reality was 20 seconds of him saying he's taking a month off, then another seven minutes of just totally useless content. I have no idea what to vlog about. ultimately doing nothing but displaying how unentertaining his content had become. This whole video just showed that the Venturian Tail channel had become totally uncommitted to their audience. And it was obvious that the remaining fans could feel this to some extent, because it would be in this same month, October 2019, that Venturian Tail would begin to lose subscribers. In September 2019, the Venturian Tail channel hit a point where it was no longer gaining enough views to maintain a positive subscriber growth. The channel hit 2.84 million subscribers, then flattened out and began to decline in October 2019. And without a growing subscriber base, the channel's views only continued to decline. As the views continued to decline, it also became obvious that Venturian Tail had become somewhat unconfident in the future of his channel, but it was subtle. If we focus on a video posted in August 2020 titled Where Are My Siblings Q&A, Venturian's lack of confidence mainly came in the form of blaming the algorithm for his failing channel. They, they change the rules on the algorithm constantly, and it's, it's incredibly tiring, and the videos don't just disappear into the black Black hole that is YouTube. But YouTube doesn't reflect that excitement, and that's where it's annoying. You guys are out there, you guys want to see the videos, but YouTube is not cooperating with me. So the subscription button doesn't mean anything anymore because of YouTube. Now, the act of blaming the algorithm or the way YouTube runs its site seems to be somewhat of a running theme in many downfall videos that we've created. It seems like such a trivial thing to simply say that the algorithm has changed. Wow, I haven't seen one of your videos in forever. It's that YouTube has not probably sent them a video in that long. But if you dig a little deeper, the act is much bigger of a deal than it seems. Firstly, by blaming the algorithm, you're somewhat confirming that you're not good enough for YouTube to recommend you anymore. The way YouTube works now, everything's 
everything's different and you guys will not see our videos unless that bell is clicked. Because the YouTube algorithm doesn't discriminate based on race, gender, or your religion. It's a machine that discriminates on how long you can keep someone on the website as well as the quality of a creator's videos. Blaming the algorithm for not recommending your videos is doing nothing but confirming that your videos don't compete against the other videos in a certain category. The act of blaming the algorithm for a decline in views is also doing nothing but distancing yourself from where you need to improve. It's very easy to say that the algorithm has changed and it's very difficult to say, hey, maybe my content has declined significantly since my peak and I need to improve it. And I'm gonna be a bit of a douchebag here and give Venturian a bit of a reality check by saying that the algorithm hasn't changed, your content is just awful in comparison to what else is available today. The goal of keeping people on the site for as long as possible hasn't really changed much since 2013. It's not the algorithm that's changed for Venturian Tail, it's his ability to keep people on the site that's changed. You could have content that competes with the relevant creators from 2013 like Vanos and PewDiePie, but you chose the path of complacency instead of the path of improvement, and you've been left in the dust as a result. I'll finish this little and probably overdone rant by saying that blaming the algorithm publicly just shows that you don't have an adaptable personality, which is arguably a requirement for a constantly changing YouTube landscape. It would also be in this video that Venturian would reveal a key piece of information indicative of how far the channel had fallen, being that each sibling had grown up and it was no longer possible for them to make videos together anymore. Are you going to play with your siblings again? That is the question everyone is asking, and I would like to. The thing is, is that we all live apart now. We've all grown up, we've all moved out, we all have our own houses and our own lives and our own jobs and things to take our time, so we don't really film together anymore. Jordan's brother Isaac would also comment on the video, stating that the siblings had all moved on from YouTube to pursue their own pathways, stating that he had begun work selling products on Amazon. Isaac stated that he would like to return to YouTube, but also seems to have been brainwashed into this idea that it's the YouTube algorithm's fault for their failing channel. In in August 2019, Bethany uploaded a video promoting a new app that she's been developing. I have an app that I've been working on for a long time with um, a coder. Showing that she's also moved on to other endeavors, and Sierra's Instagram as well as the deletion of all her personal channel videos seems to hint that she's also moved on in life. The departure of the siblings that made the channel so successful in the first place is nothing but an overall indication that the channel has certainly changed quite dramatically since its inception in January 2013. Then, more recently, the views on the channel have dropped even further to around 1.5 million per month in recent times. Venturian Tail has gone from uploading three times per day to only once per week. Why do you record only once a week now? YouTube! Once again buying into some kind of bizarre delusion where he thinks that uploading less will ensure that more people see his content. The more we put up videos, the less views each one got, so we've been trying to um, put up less. You know, I would like to upload more. I figure if I put them up once a week, everyone gets a chance to see them, and the videos don't just disappear into the black hole that is YouTube. The overall reason for Venturian Tail's downfall? His content wasn't improving while everyone else's was. Then, when it did get to the point where he realized that his videos weren't good enough to compete, his ego tricked him into thinking that his videos were perfect, and it was the algorithm's responsibility to change, rather than his personal responsibility to improve his videos to a level comparable to the other creators on the platform. Obviously, the algorithm is never going to change for a single creator and is always is instead going to favor the collective. While Venturian Tail sits back and blames the algorithm, they, they change the rules on the algorithm constantly, and it's it's incredibly tiring. His channel does nothing but continues to decline in viewership, and until he's able to look at his own flaws and come to terms with the areas in which his videos need to improve, his viewership is unlikely to ever increase from the 1.5 million views per month he's currently receiving.